Is that your ringtone? Hello? Wait. Hey, Rob, what's up? Dude, use, put your speakerphone on. Hold on one second. Jesus. Steve is all thumbs. Really, dude? Are you there? Yeah, we're here. Sorry about that. Yeah, is this okay? Yeah, this is great. <laughs> okay. What's going on, Rob? All right, Rob. So is, you're on Finding Stacks with uh, Alex Hernandez and Steve Owens. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're talking to Rob Bruce and... Ryan Scott Weber. Ryan Scott Weber. Ryan Scott Weber. All right, rock on. Noted, noted independent horror uh, producer and director, Ryan Scott Weber. Fantastic. Have, you, have you directed nice. anything that, that we've seen or any commercial kind of things? Uh, Sheriff Tom vs. Zombies, uh, uh, Mary Horror. I have a new movie coming out this year. It's called Pretty Fine Things, which just got it's distribution. Yeah, we just got distribution. Oh, kick ass. When's it coming out? September. Awesome. Your, your nearest Walmart. Your nearest Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So are, are you guys doing the New Jersey Horror Con and Film Festival together? Yes, yes. What made you guys decide to do that? Uh, good question. Uh, Ryan and I have known each other for years. Um, I've actually cameoed in a number of his movies. He called me up one day and said, hey, you know what? I want to do like a horror con film festival. I said, that's a fucking great idea. <laughs> and, and that's <laughs> and how it started? The rest is history. So, you know, so my background, I, I produced a number of uh, comic cons. I've been to uh, over 1,100 uh, comic pop culture festivals starting in uh, 1975. It kind of makes me old, but uh, no. well born. Just, wi- I just wiser. San Diego in 93 which is probably older than, you know, the medium age of your average listener. <laughs> but uh, it felt like there's a lack of independent horror in uh, Jersey, so we wanted to do something that really focused on independent horror and, and uh, the weird and obscure. Yeah, and, and, you know, Jersey is sort of a hotbed right now for independent horror movies, uh, pop culture. I mean, obviously the stores here, you know, Secret Stash, the comic book been shot in Jersey. Red Bank, New Jersey, my hometown, where I was born. But all this stuff sort of came together, a amalgam of pop culture, horror. I'm a huge uh, um, horror giant monster toy collector for years. Pretty well known, you know, within, within the collecting world for that. And it just sort of all came together and made sense that uh, nobody's doing a film festival that's attached directly to a convention. There are horror cons in Jersey, but they're like meet and greets, entertainment, uh, you know, long lines, getting autographs, some vendors, but nobody's kind of tied the two things together where you have a legitimate horror uh, uh, film festival. Now, it, you know, it's 95% horror, the whole show. So there's a little overlap. We tried to get all, every guest we've tried to get has at least been in one notable horror movie. And not to say they haven't done other things. Or sci-fi, or sci-fi. And we kind of treat horror and sci-fi in the same vein. So, um, are you showing any films there? Like, yes. You okay? So you are. So it's not just a, a meet and greet, yeah, like you, you said. Can submit for uh, what's the yeah. Actually, uh, we have a film freeway website. You can go to New Jersey Horror Con. Just type it in. It'll come up. Uh, our la- our late late deadline is February second, and then the other one is the thirteenth, I believe. That's the cutoff date. The cutoff date. And we've had uh, over 150 submissions already, and we're going to be playing movies all weekend long. So So when the convention's going on, the movies are going to be going on. We have special uh, guests and events. Uh, Most notably, John Waters is going to do a a talk, his show, on Saturday night, which is going to be like an event within the overall event. So you pay $150, you get to come in for the weekend. You get to see John Waters, you get an autographed book, you get posters, t-shirts, you know, whatever else we're going to give out. Picture with John. Picture with John. And and that's like sort of a special thing. You know, he's best known for doing trash movies, but he has done horror movies, uh, the Maniacs film, most notably. So it's sort of like trying to cross over and and connect all the dots. There's a lot of dots. But, but to have 
an ongoing film festival with convention at the same time is kind of unusual. And I think, you know, it's struck a, a, a very positive chord. We've had a lot of followers, but had a lot of John Waters pre-sales, pre-sales uh, for the show itself. And it's not a crazy expensive show. I mean, $20, you buy the tickets daily, come at the door on the day of the show, it's 25 bucks, which is well within the tolerances and gets you like, you know, access to a lot of uh, great entertainers and horror uh, retailers. Yeah, I think any horror lover will easily pay $20, probably even more if you wanted to make it more expensive. And we want to make it easy for people. That's the other thing. You know, it's not like you go to these shows and it's almost cost prohibitive. Uh, I mean, I do a lot of conventions. I go to New York Comic Con, and if you really, if you're not like connected and don't know how to get around for free, it, it costs you hundreds of dollars. Rob, I found a- Rob, I found I found a way to, to get away from paying a hundred dollars mm-hmm. to meet uh, one person, and it's you just go and stalk them uh, as they go to the restroom. Yeah. Does that work? Yeah. At the airport? No, <laughs> no, the bathroom. No, 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 just the bathroom. The bathroom. Right? <laughs> just hang out at the bathroom at the Comic Con, and there you go. <laughs> no, but John Waters, you get the, you're gonna get a show. You're gonna get a, him to sign a book, personalized things, and possibly maybe one of your items. And he'll take pictures. So he will be, you know, the, right there is well worth the money. And there's a lot of other guests coming too. We're doing a whole uh, Frank and Hooker reunion with the director Frank Hennelotter, and uh, Patty Mullen, James Lorenz, James Lorenz, and with that we're gonna do a basket case because Frank directed basket case. So there's gonna be a one of the basket case guys is going to be there, and then Brain Damaged, which is another one of his movies. We have we have uh, Rick Hurst. Rick Hurst from Brain Damaged will be there. So it's, you're going to tie it all together. They're going to do a, a big panel, so you get to talk to people who made the movies. And it's a lot of uh, in Jersey, in particular, the tri-state area. There's a lot of DIY, uh, you know, homegrown directors. So it's going to be a place where you can actually meet other directors, talk to them. People who make movies, like-minded special effects people, and, and you just don't get that at, at a lot of these horror conventions. Not to say that the horror conventions are a bad thing, but you know, if you want to become a part of the industry, where do you go and, and seek out and meet these people? You can go to our event, you know, New Jersey Horror Con and Film Festival. Is this the first annual? First annual, correct. Okay. If you become a, a biannual, it really depends on on how will logistics go on the first show out of the box. I've done and produced other conventions, most notably Asbury Park Comic Con. Uh, we grew that from like 250 people to 7,000 in Jeez. three years. So it's a matter of, you know, just getting it to go in the right direction and nursing it along. Kick ass. What made y'all pick Edison? Uh, logistically, for this part of New Jersey, it, it's a really easy location. Uh, we looked at about 15... Of, uh, event spaces, hotels, and just, it, it, it was very simple. And, and, and like, I'm in my mid-50s, so I, I leave Red Bank, I drive to Edison, I don't get lost, I get there in 32 minutes. For me, that's a win-win. Because <laughs> a lot of times, there's another convention space, I don't know if you're here in Texas, but in Jersey, we've got about 10 or 15 exhibition centers. So there's another exhibition center a couple of miles away, but... I've been to that place, done multiple shows there, and gone three different directions and got lost twice. So I think the simplicity of this specific location, it's at the Crown Wall, uh, Crown Plaza Hotel on Route 27. It's got 1,500 parking spaces. It's got easy access, roll in, roll out. It's just for, for doing shows, it makes it a little bit simple. That's pretty kick-ass. I saw on your... Uh... Hi, actually, it was right between where we both yeah. live. <laughs> and it's right off of like five or six major highways. So. Oh, kick ass. Um, I saw on the website, uh, which is a New Jersey Horror Con dot com, that uh, yep. you guys are going to have a couple of vehicles there. Is that true? Yeah, we're going to have uh, Back to the Future DeLorean. Oh, we're going to have the Scooby Doo Mystery Machine. Oh, and we're going to have the uh, Ghostbusters. So. Echo One? Oh, Echo oh, One. That would be right out in front for people to check out. Oh, is, there, is there any way that. Um, you can give me special permission to drive it if I make my way up there. Money talks, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Ten dollars. Yeah. Jersey. Oh, that's yeah. true. <laughs> that's awesome. That's kick ass, right? Jersey, we do whatever we want here. <laughs> Everything's legal in New Jersey. <laughs> if it isn't, it surely will be. 
<laughs> so on, on these, uh, maybe we should do a ticket to drive the car for. There you go. Yeah, on, a raffle. Be, yeah, do a raffle. It'd awesome. be great. <laughs> yeah, for the second one. Uh, so on on the submission for these films, you said you've already gotten a uh, hundred and fifty so far. Are, are these mm-hmm. from filmmakers all over the states, or is it strictly all, all over different countries? I've got some from Italy. It's, uh, you know, Danish, from, Danish, I think, yeah, there's, I mean, and New Jersey, we have a special price for New Jersey filmmakers, um, which is a little low, five dollars, five or ten dollars lower, um, but, uh, you know, we're, we're accepting from all over, because we don't want to limit ourselves to, to showing a great film, so, right. that's right, that's right. And so, are you, are you, uh, I guess, kind of skimming them, like, viewing them prior to even yeah, showing them? Yeah, who's, who's curating this list? <clears throat> yeah, we have a, we have a bunch of judges. Uh, we have actually uh, Anthony Cantonese is also a local filmmaker. He's running the film festival part of it. I'm also overseeing a lot of the movies, checking them out myself, and um, uh, we're watching every single one. I'm not just watch, skimming through because that's not how I watch a movie, at least. But um, we want to watch every single one. A lot of them are short, so it's easy to get through them. Um, and, you know, it's actually pretty interesting to see what's out there. I'm pretty impressed so far. Mm-hmm. There's one movie from Jersey City that was really great so, that I just saw, which is called uh, Let's Play Dead Girl. And um, it's, uh, it's won a bunch of awards, I believe, already. But, um, you know, there's, there's just so much talent out there. And it's, it's great to just, like, you know, actually watch these films. And I obviously enjoy watching horror movies because I make them. But... Uh, <laughs> It's just cool to, to see what else is out there. So uh, I, I'm having a blast. So, how so do you, it's not me. There's like three other people. So How do you feel uh, about um, directing, like a teaming up to make a full feature? Like, have you seen that movie VHS? I'm sure you have. Uh, yeah. So do you, do you, how do you feel about going about it that way instead of making a, an hour or a 70-minute, 80-minute uh, feature film and doing... Increments of about 15, 20 minutes of a story. Vignettes. Yeah. A short, you mean? Yeah, the, making shorts, but teaming them all, like, I guess kind of having the, the same kind of um, uh, flow, even you know, flow like, throughout like the creep way. show style, where they just put a bunch of stories together for an episode? Yeah. How, how do you, do you, have you been a part of something like that before, or do you plan on doing something like that? Well, I've actually made four features. Uh, I mean, Mary Horror, Sheriff Tom vs. Zombies, Witches Blood, which is a trilogy. They're all full features. Then I just made my last movie, Pretty Fine Things. I've made two short films um, called Legend of Zeke, and the other one was called Ghoul's Night Out. So those are 20-minute shorts. Um, And I actually make a TV series called Zombies Incorporated. That's about two idiots that start a zombie-killing business, and uh, it's shot like a reality show. So those are kind of like 15, 20-minute shorts. So I've experienced it before to tell a story in that short amount of time, and I think it's, it's a challenge. Because you have to, you know, really get the point across with the short, and th- those are actually harder to make, I think, than a feature. So I give the shorts a lot of props, and we're going to have great short blocks of films yeah, and, showing. And I, I have ADHD, so I can only watch shorts. <laughs> <laughs> so for for people, individuals, a lot of big filmmakers out there, so and I find the ones under five minutes are really, really good. Under <laughs> five minutes, really? They make those? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's five minutes short. There's one that was two minutes. I think uh, that was committed. The most famous one is uh, Godzilla meets Bambi. Come on. Godzilla meets Bambi. Oh, I saw that. I think. That up. I think. <laughs> yeah, I have that. I have a copy of that. <laughs> That's crazy. So, for people that can't attend or or out of the state. We had a party foul over here. Hold on. Oh, it's all right. No, no. <laughs> We're in my office. My office has got uh, 150,000 toys in it. Sorry. All right. Yeah, so, yeah, we're... But, like, you know, I I think shorts and features, whatever the case is, it's art to me. And, and if people, you know, they want to see these films and they want to experience this, we're trying to create a whole experience for people when they come. So, so for people that aren't able to attend um, The Unfortunates, uh, how, how will they... Will any of these films be available for, I don't know, purchase online or, like, to download? Uh, I think or what we're going to do, actually, is have a trailer of all the films that, 
that made it into the festival um, as a promo thing to promote the filmmakers. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of clips from all the films. Um, and we'll have a list of the films on our website and in the program so they can check it out later, but we're not going to be doing anything with them afterwards. But, you know, if some are, well, they might win an award or whatever if they, uh, we have awards ceremony. We're going to have handmade New Jersey Horrorcon awards. Um, not that many, so it's kind of exclusive to a few. But, uh, it's going to be, you know, I, I, I want to promote the filmmakers. We're also going to have a filmmaker, uh, area for tables for filmmakers that want to come out and spread the word about their movies so um it's kind of hard without coming to the event but online you know you'll be able to see a trailer or whatever right we'll probably do some uh like live facebooking and that sort of thing as well but yeah that's that's you know we're still eight eight weeks plus a couple of days out and just getting the logistics together is is uh enough I mean, if you wanted to come in, Newark Airport's probably less than 25 miles away, and there's definitely uh, hotel rooms. So you could probably do the whole trip from anywhere in the country for three, 400 bucks for the weekend, I mean, realistically. The hotel is a great price, too. It's 119 a night. Very, um, oh, no way. That's a great price, especially yeah. for the Crown Plaza. Um, and uh, a, lot of people, a lot of people from all over the country and, and other places, uh, we don't all have the... The kick-ass rail system that you guys have. So anybody flying into Newark Airport could take the train to Edison. Yeah. And that's super badass and convenient. Yeah, very convenient. I mean, it's like literally right up the road. How many? Uh, how many guys? How many guests are y'all expecting? Uh, not. I'm sorry, not guests. I mean attendees. Attendees somewhere between two and twenty-five hundred. Kick-ass. So it's not like a huge, huge show, but I'd really be surprised if we don't get, if we get under 2,000. And then just with the, all the connections that we have and doing events, be, you know, previously and just talking to everybody and knowing everybody, you know, a lot of uh, people don't know like how tight the convention scene is in Jersey in particular. I mean, we have, we have like conventions that happen every week here, uh, every month. First every month there's a show that has 400 people show up, but it's been going on for 20 years, you know, maybe it only has 45, 50 vendors, but that's how, how small the shows get in the nuclear level of, of Jersey. And then obviously there's the bigger Monster Manias, Chillers, and uh, New Jersey uh, Comic Expo, and uh, 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 Garden State, Garden State uh, Comic Festival, just to mention a few. There's probably 10 to 20 conventions in Jersey alone, then you go across the bridge in New York. So it's easy to draw because we have a lot of people, a lot of big fan base of people who just like to go to conventions. We've been inundated with, with emails and messages, people wanting to be involved. And uh, it's just crazy how, you know, so far we're really, people are excited about this, that we're doing something like this around here. So it's it's been nothing but great positive feedback. So I know I know you guys are doing this horror con and it's it's amazing. But where did this this love for horror uh, stem from? Like what shows did you watch whenever you were well, a little younger? I mean, I'm, I'm a giant monster fan, so it really stems from you know uh, Godzilla and Gamera and my my love of Ultraman and, and Takatsu, early '60s '70s Japanese uh, Sentai live action, you know uh, Mirror Man, Spectre Man. But I have a 20 year old son who for the last six or seven years has been making his own independent movies and is in college. And one of them. <laughs> really? <laughs> the connection that Ryan and I have is because he, he, my kids worked in his movies, he's worked in our movies, you know, so it is this, this weird and independent threat. Now, slasher films, I'm, I'm, I would say I'm terrified of slasher movies, but I've had enough real life experiences that I, I tend not to go and see them. But everybody loves slasher movies. I love the first Halloween film. I think it's yeah. Amazing. I like slasher. I'm more into the gore. That's where I'm at. Yeah. And I like Pumpkinhead. That first Pumpkinhead movie is great. Yeah. Before, before I got in, just I've always loved horror my whole life, and I just saw a, a great fan base for horror when I started going to Chiller years, Chiller Theater years ago. And um, I always, I always feel like a horror movie could be the most creative. You know, in uh, making the horror film, so that's why I chose to make horror film. Because you can do so much more 
than he could with a comedy or or you know something else. Like I just feel like there's so much. Well, because like, you can do comedy horror, with, with horror and all special effects and everything. That's that's I enjoy all that, and I've learned how to do it. Uh, you know, to how to do a special effect a lot more than I used to know just from doing these films. And you just see a great big fan base and and uh, dedicated people that love horror. And uh, I mean, I love the Nightmare on Elm Street series. I like Wes Craven a lot. I like the People Under the Stairs. I like the Chucky movies. Like, I like Leprechaun. All those weird, funny. I like a little funny. Uh, I just saw Leprechaun just a few weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer, Jennifer Aniston looks so so different <laughs> in in yeah. Leprechaun, but I, that's what well, I, I like. Warwick Davis. I think he's uh, fantastic. I don't know if it's because I was so little, but when Nightmare on Elm Street first came out, it scared the shit out of me. I was terrified yeah. of that movie. It's just a great, it's really, it's well done. It's, I like the third, I think it's the third one, the Dream Child one. Oh, that's Dream, 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 Dream Warrior. Dream, Dream Warrior. Warrior, there you go. Where, where yeah. Dawkin, Dawkin did the theme song. Yeah, but you know, you got Johnny Depp in the first one. Yes. When he died in a waterbed. <laughs> Yeah. You can still die in the water, baby. So bad. <laughs> We're hoping one day to get Robert England at one of our events. And, uh, yeah, we tried really hard to get him this time, but he said he'd come to the next one. All right, well, yeah. I'll, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys ever been to Texas Frightmare down there? I haven't. Have you? No, no we haven't. That's a great convention down in Texas. Though. I've heard a lot of great things about it. I'm not really sure where it is in Texas, but... Well, Texas uh, is a pretty big fucking state, so... Yeah, no, I've been there a few times. I used to play in a band, and I used to go on tour in Texas, and it was always great shows there, so... What kind of, what kind of music did y'all play? Uh, pop punk. You were okay. right up my alley. What, what instrument did you play? Drums. Nice. And I was, we were called Crash Romeo. Sweet. <laughs> Can you... We were um, on Records, which is a hardcore label, but we were a pop punk band on that, and... Uh, this whole uh, inter- Texas th- for about a week, uh, a couple like twice, uh, twice I was there for about a week touring all over because it's such a big state. So this whole interview was a ruse just so we could get that nugget. Yeah, <laughs> That's, look it up. It's yeah, straight up horny pop punk. Enough about the horror stuff. Let's go straight into pop punk. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, Rob and I kind of like the same music. We like a lot of punk stuff, so we. Uh, Y'all surf it, together. I actually uh, was fortunate to uh, travel with the Ramones when I was younger. No way. How did that happen? In the Clash. I worked at CBGB's and went to school in New York City in the uh, late 70s, early 80s. And just, I was a line roadie and I worked with a bunch of those bands. As a matter of fact, I can't, I probably can't say this, but I'm going to say it anyway, but one of the Ramones is going to be on Comic Book Men the second half of the sixth season. No shit. Kick ass. <laughs> Oh, so there's only like one left. I think. <laughs> it's only Marky, right? Isn't it Marky? Yeah, Marky, yeah, yeah. But I can't say that, so you didn't hear it from me. I don't, yeah, who is this? We, yeah, we start, uh, the second half of the sixth season starts in two weeks. Oh, kick ass. Speaking of so, which, ha- has there any, been any word on uh, season seven? There has not been any word, but we have all uh, renegotiated our contracts. Well, that's a start. That's a step in the right direction. Now to, uh, to uh, season nine, right? Oh, kick ass. Oh, man. And the numbers have been still really holding well. We're doing great. Top 25, all cable on Sunday. Like, really, like, most people don't know that the show is even on, but we still attract 800 to a million views per episode. So, uh, I mean, everything's, you know, gung-ho. It's sort of in a box, so it's really easy to make, which is what a lot of uh, the networks like. There's not a lot of, you know, obviously there's a lot of work when we get involved. Different locations. And, you know, Right. I'm sure most people by now know that I'm one of the producers of the show, as well as I have like my four uh, appearances during the season. So I actually work on the show uh, about 30 days out before we start shooting. I work in creative, and I help set up a lot of uh, the uh, threads that go through the show, the A stories. So you know, everybody says, oh, "Where are you? Where are you? Where are you?" But I'm working on the show 12, 14 hours a day when we're shooting. We're just saying, "How?" Oh, and in our office complex we're in now, my team thing have their podcast studios right across the hallway, so Oh, kick so, ass. You no, know, I see these guys almost every day. Yeah, I, I podcasted with Ming Chen uh a couple of podcasts, man. 
Yeah, I, I, I met up with him at uh, Alamo City Comic Con, and we chatted for like 15, 20 minutes. He's he's an amazing that person. Was, he's pretty cool. That convention that had the line around the uh, block, right? Yeah, yeah, that was a one. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. It, it really was, yeah. Yeah, that's badass. Yeah, Ming was super sweet to, to do that for us. It was pretty cool. Yeah, great guy. Tim Bryan and Walt and Mike, they're all great. Yeah, yeah. Now, I've been... Yeah. I've been to uh, I've been to the stash twice. Uh, the both times uh, I didn't get to. Uh, I met Mike and Walt both times, and yeah, um, they, they work in the store regularly. And on the second time, uh, I got to meet you, Rob. But yeah, there you go. but uh, I don't. I'm not sure Ming's ever there, man. He's always he's, <laughs> he's on Instagram all the time. <laughs> he's well, doing, he works, you know, uh, he works like on the. Uh, logistical side anyway so he doesn't actually work in the store well there you go he's just been on the website for years right upstairs in the office upstairs in the office right cool That's so cool. You, you collect a lot of uh, uh figurines toys comics yes right up so what is your most uh revered yeah what's your prize possession what's, what's the one that you would you would die for what yeah what's or, your uh or give up your fifth child for yeah I have so much shit, I don't know, but <laughs> one thing that, that probably would be like the last thing I'd ever sell, if I would ever sell it, was I actually have one of my father's toys from like the 30s when he was a kid. Uh, oh, really? Die cat, cast iron, arcade, dump truck. That when I was growing up, like, you know, four or five years old, uh, I used to play with his farm set at my grandmother's house. And as corny as that sounds, it's probably the one thing, you know, and then the modern stuff that I've collected, I've got a Gamera figure that I probably would never sell. Oh, uh, kick ass. Because so, it's just the first one they ever produced. It took me years to find. What What's your most elusive, like what, what have you been on the hunt for and you haven't been able to find? What's your big uh, game? I've gotten everything at least once. <laughs> Batman, Batman, Ideal, you know, uh, Bat Belt or something. You know, there's high-end crazy shit out there. Roto-Jet guns and yeah, but you know, I've seen it. I've held it I've, in the '80s and the '90s when I was, you know, collecting to get to the point where I am now. I just had massive amounts of material. I mean, just I have like way too much stuff, way too much. One of the reasons why I have ADHD because I just <laughs> raised it. I'd be a poster child for Ritalin if it affected me. But, it was, <laughs> but you know, it's all about for me. It's the hunt. So. Everybody asks, so what are you looking for? What are you looking for? Well, I'm looking for a cup of coffee at 5.15 in the morning in a straight line with no gears headed west. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I'm going to the flea market. I go to the flea market like two or three times. I was there on uh, Sunday. Collingwood? No, uh, Sunday I went to Columbus. Oh, Ironically, cool. Genham showed up at Collingwood and was bragging about some guy carrying a Buck Rogers Halloween candy, you know, doing a get him, a get him at. <laughs> I, I've been out to uh, Columbus because Columbus tends to be a little denser with dealers on on the weekends of Sunday as opposed to Friday you really want to go to Collingwood because the tables are two dollars a piece on Friday at Collingwood most people don't know this most people don't give a shit so Friday is like garage sale days it used, used to be able to go to a uh, yard sale a um, flea market every day of the week in New Jersey and I think you can go every day now except Monday but they've gotten weaker, you know, in some some respects. Collingswood and Columbus are still pretty strong, but uh, all the other peripheral ones, they've seemed to. The, the internet's really done a number on them. Yeah, yeah so all the all the good shit's gone. What's that? I said all the good shit's gone. Well, it's Jersey. The advantage of Jersey is, is you have so many people living on top of people, on top of people, on top of people. The good shit still comes out. I know that sounds crazy, but I buy like you know. Teddy Roosevelt, I bought a Teddy Roosevelt pin on uh, Sunday morning for two bucks. <laughs> really? Wait, how did you know it was a Teddy Roosevelt pin? Because he was my great great grand uncle. That's a good reason. Yeah, I would... No, because the bull moose, he was my great great grand uncle. But it, it was a bull moose pin, and the bull moose was the symbol, like the, the elephant or the donkey for the Democrats, the elephant for Republicans. Bull moose was for the Progressive Party. Which in 1908, when Teddy Roosevelt ran for uh, president, that was the party he had started, the third party. That's, why don't they you do it anymore? I have a very large, uh, most people don't notice, I have a very large 
political pin collection. Yeah, I have a Mondeo Ferraro one upstairs. Yeah, I must have a thousand pins. What, what, what is that? It's a lapel pin. pin. Oh, you know, like you wear buttons. Like the American flag one? Yeah, like you wear buttons and things like that. And that's what oh. they are. That's so My favorite pin is a uh, 1936 Fiorello LaGuardia for governor. You've heard of LaGuardia, right? Yeah, the airport. So he was a governor uh, for pre- mayor of New York City. He was a mayor in New York City, and it was uh, the Socialist Party supporting him. <laughs> so how the world's changed completely. Like, I have a Mega Man pen. <laughs> oh, sweet. Mega, so Mega Man's like a, awesome. Like that's so hey, I have a I have a, a another random question. Um, this is about filmmaking, and uh, I I know you're kind of into comics, and then with all these comic book movies coming out, um, is there a movie that you would want to see be remade that's already been made, or one that hasn't been made yet? And which character would would that comic be? book or not comic book? It, yeah, the comic book or like those horror well, comics. You know what I mean? I, I think we should both answer this. I'll answer it first. It's Rob Bruce from uh, AMC's comic book man. And popculturism.com, popculturism.com. If you look for me online, all you need to do is Google Rob Bruce. It's really fucked up. But my favorite <laughs> character growing up was a character called Dead Man, who uh, was a DC character. He was a, a trapeze artist. He was killed, uh, murdered, and he vengeful. He never died. And, and his superpower was he would literally, he was like a ghost. He went and took over other people's bodies. They've never used that character outside of maybe a couple of episodes at JLU. But never used him in a movie. I'd love to see him in a movie. And and that was one of those books was sixty eight, sixty nine really got me into comics with the Neil Adams book. Neil Adams was like my hero growing up, which you know, nowadays I could sit and talk to him for forty, fifty minutes because he's basically a friend. But I've had him on the show, been on comic book men. He actually did a uh, came in the store one day and, and did a signing for the guys at the store. But it's just I, I think that I'd love to see that. I mean, but you know, most of the modern movies are great. Even, I mean, I just watched uh, Suicide Squad again. I mean, it has it has a big hole in it. It really drives me crazy because they introduce this character just to kill him off. The guy he tries to escape by climbing away, and they blow his head off. But there's no pre-story to who that guy is. He just shows up. Oh, at the and beginning, I, there was an Indian dude, right? The Indian dude, right? Was at the like, beginning, what the fuck? they needed to kill somebody, and we're going to kill the five actors again. He's not. This guy's getting day rent. Freaking like $1,500 a day to be there. That's what hilarious. That uh, it was Howard the Duck, a comic book person. Howard the Duck, Howard the Duck. They should be Howard the Duck in the, in the Duck world. The in, whole movie. In the Duck world, not here. Not not, not going to uh, Steve Gerber, America. Incredible like 1976 month. creation, Howard the yeah, Duck. Yeah, they should remake it like the comic book. I, I yeah. love Howard the Duck. I watched the shit out of that movie. And, yeah, it's uh, a great movie. I'm not saying it's bad. I, what that movie? I like to see more of the Duck World. Which movie? Like Darkwing Duck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Howard the Darkwing Duck. Duck. That would be a great movie. Howard the Duck was a uh, Lucas Arts uh, produced that. In yeah, the late Leah Thompson. Leah Thompson. Leah right? Thompson was in there. Yeah. Yeah. Tim Robbins. Horrible movie. <laughs> Tim Robbins movie. was on there. And then what's that scary is guy's amazing. name? Ed Kale is amazing. He's he is the bad guy. Howard the Duck. He's also uh, Chuck. He was also Chucky in the first. Uh, All right, yeah. Chucky, and he he's he's really good to his fans. I actually sent him a letter. He sent me a signed photo. Of Power of the Duck. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. But I I would like to see more of the Duck World. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Yeah, let's go see his planet. Yeah. Well, it got it blew up. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> in, the, in the comics, I think there was more of the Duck World. Uh, that's what you know. They should yeah. they should have concentrated on. Maybe a little. I think cool. I think my buddy Steve is just trying to say he wants to have one of those uh, Play Duck magazines. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> Play Duck. <laughs> well, I'm saying I think they missed that part of it. You know. <laughs> yeah, that'd be really cool. But yeah, but but yeah, just, uh, I think that's really. Yeah, I don't know. I think they need to redo Ghostbusters with uh, the original cast. And- <laughs> Uh, yeah, that would be pretty cool if uh, Harold was here. Yeah, or, I know. Or make make a, a Ghostbusters. I think they would, it would be cool. Yeah, make make, make a Ghostbusters movie that's all girls, and then call it something else. Yeah, it doesn't have. Yeah, to. I, I I mean I like the idea of the girls. Maybe the girls and guys together. Maybe. Right, yeah. like they made it seem like it was a franchise. 
I'm too old. I'm never gonna watch a movie that has female Ghostbusters on it. <laughs> <laughs> I maybe maybe I when it comes on like Netflix, I'll watch it. But other than that, you can only watch the bad ones. I, like, I actually thought the girls did a good job. I thought there was big, huge plot holes, and I was disappointed. The end was wasted. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm not going to like it more than the original. I mean, I thought it had its moments, but yeah. I, I can't... I not like the original. No. Yeah, I, I made my kids watch the original. The, the, movies, the good movies, you can't remake them. Yeah. I mean, who the hell greenlit the freaking thing with all women? Why did they do it like men and women? Like a, well, they had that one... They had Thor in there. The Thor guy was in there. I mean, I'm feminist, and I don't get that shit. Let me tell you, Back to the Future did it right, because they have those rights flopped down and they won't make a remake until they're dead. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> well, what's his name will still be in there, right? George McFly? Yeah, McFly <laughs> will still be in it. Yeah, yeah we're going to have uh, Jeffrey Weissman. We're going to have um, Harry Water Jr. We're going to have uh, Jim Carrey. Uh, and they're all yeah, from part two, Tony right? Buck and Ricky Dean Logan. They're all from part two, right? Yeah. Uh, some of them are in the first. Harry Waters was in Part one and two. He was uh, Marvin Barry. Oh, uh, oh, his your cousin. cousin. You know your cousin, Marvin Barry. Yeah. And we got Goldie Wilson, Mayor Goldie Wilson. Oh, I like the sound of that, Wilson. Mayor Wilson. Goldie Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Logan was the um, one of fifth uh, Griff gang members, and um, wait, which and Billy Zane? They fly in the sequels. <laughs> yeah, that's so badass. Wait, yeah, wait, like, I'm doing that around here, and I don't know why. And I, I'm a huge Back to the Future nut, so I love Back to the Future. We had to do it, and we got the DeLorean with them all there, and it's gonna be cool. And that's the sci-fi kind of part of it, you know, well, that we're throwing in. Because I think Back to the Future is like kind of all genre. Will the original Jennifer be there? No, what, what, I think we're just gonna stick with the four for now. But we'll see if there's any surprises coming up in the next month. And we're working on some surprises. We can't mention them yet. We got a bunch of announcements still coming out. So. All right, so just check back with your website, all right? Yeah. Uh, you can either go to njhorrorcon.com or newjerseyhorrorcon.com. So either one works. And, and what are y'all's uh, Twitter handles, Instagrams, Facebooks? Yeah, Twitter, Instagram, is, and Facebook is njhorrorcon. So facebook.com is njhorrorcon. Twitter and, and Instagram is njhorrorcon. And, and, NJ and individually, your handles are... Uh, I'm Ryan Scott Weber, so it's just facebook.com slash Ryan Scott Weber. I'm Ryan Scott Weber on Twitter and on Instagram, yeah. And I'm uh, Pop Culturism, P-O-P-C-U-L-T-U-R-I-Z-M on Twitter, Instagram, and the rest of the time I'm Rob Bruce. You can Google Rob Bruce and I pop up, though, the first five photos. Wow. I think yeah, one of them is like a statue. What's that? <laughs> so one of, one of them is a statue. Uh, what's his name? Robert, Robert the Bruce. Robert DeBruce, yeah. there you go. Uh, he wasn't a statue, he was the king of Skyland. That's my great, 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 Yeah, there's a statue of me over at uh, Oklahoma, in you know, Oklahoma University in Norman, Oklahoma. Go Sooners! Yeah. Steve Owens won the uh, Heisman Trophy the year before OJ. <laughs> really? Yeah, so there's a, there's a statue of him there. Well, a statue of you there. Yeah, yeah, me. I mean, me. Wow. No, but I'm really, like, uh, related. Well, I'm really not. <laughs> well, see, I mean, really, you are related to that guy? I mean, they to... are. If you construct a statue of me, you're going to go right next to Count Basie. <laughs> well, that'd be badass. <laughs> I mean, you know, the funny thing about Count Basie is from Red Bank, New Jersey. I'm sure a lot of people out there are listening know that. But what they don't know, and there's a Count Basie Theater, and there's a Count Basie Street, there's a Count Basie, like, little plaza, but... When he left town in like the early '60s, he was known to have said that he was never coming back because they didn't like the racist motherfuckers that lived in Red Bank. <laughs> <laughs> he moved to Queens. Go figure. Yeah, go figure. <laughs> yeah, one of my favorite Frank Sinatra albums is uh, is with Count Basie. Yeah, he was great. Great, great musician. Great musician. He used to drive an MG. I, I got to find out more about your CBGB stuff. Oh, I was the midweek uh, lighting guy. So basically, the weekend guys didn't want to do the lights for the the, the horrible bands that would play the Guns N' Roses and the fucking Metallica played on a Thursday night at like eight o'clock. So they had to have somebody come in and 
cover all that shit, and I was like one of those guys. So I that lived, uh, first and ninth, so it was about three and a half blocks away. So it was you, just a thing I did. Just one thing led to another. So I did you, a lot of drugs, too. You did a what? You did a lot of, a lot drug? of drugs? Oh. A lot, a lot of drugs. I actually That's got a <laughs> 84, the straight edge. I quit everything one day, including cigarette smoke. Everything, one day. Is Drinking, it? drugs. I mean, I'm not proud of it, but it's the fact of life. I did you know, heroin and cocaine. I was living in New York City. I'm a fucking teenager. What the fuck do I know? <laughs> <laughs> so is that why you were growing your hair? Crazy was, it was so crazy that the building, I, I split this apartment with the, this gal, and she was the assistant manager for uh, Don Imus at the time. And, and when you went downstairs in the vestibule, there was a guy who actually had an office area, and you could buy, like, nickel bags right from him. So you didn't have to go down to the park. You could buy them right out of the lobby. It was so fucking crazy. <laughs> That's badass. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's pretty fucking funny. So is that why you, you wanted to stay close to your roots and, like, you grew your hair very, very long with the dreadlocks? I cut my hair. You did cut it? I did cut my hair. Most people don't recognize me anymore. I, I got pissed off one night and I cut my hair. By accident? What? By accident? No, I took a pair of like 1910 scissors and cut the fucking thing off. It actually got like an uh, animal. It looks like an animal. <laughs> I'm holding it a pedigree right now. <laughs> I gave it a glass eye. <laughs> you just carried it around with you? You had like a parrot on your shoulder? I like that. Yeah. The problem was that it was, getting, it was pulling all my hair out. So... And most people said, well, how long did you grow that? And I said, well, I, it was only about five years. Yeah. So if you've ever seen how long it was, it was down, like almost down to my belt. But it was time to move forward. <laughs> well, and I don't have the friggin' hair loss, and I feel better, and people don't think I'm some pothead, because I wasn't smoking pot anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. I mean, you would think you would look like a little bit of a Jamaican style... You just always... You're making me crazy. You know why my hair was that way? I'm going to tell you the truth, right? So I got I got a bunch of kids, and early in the morning, they get in the shower, and they need to comb their hair. My wife would always yell at me, where's the comb? Where's the comb? I can't find the comb. You got the longest hair in the house. You must have the comb. I said, all right, that's it. Fuck it. I'm never combing my hair again. <laughs> <laughs> that is how I got dreadlocks. They just locked up. And it was like a unidread. <laughs> that sounds fantastic. That's pretty funny. It's true. Well, thanks, Rob. I appreciate you and guys doing this for us. And yeah, well, I appreciate you guys having us on. Yeah. Uh, New Jersey Hard Con and Film Festival is March thirty first, April first and second. Tickets are available on the website right now. Um, we are going to have uh, Lloyd Kaufman. We're going to have John Waters. We're going to have Michael Berryman. We're going to have Linda Lore. We're going to have Patty Mullen from Frankenhooker. We're going to have Ted Raimi coming. Ted Raimi! We're going to have uh, uh, Serena Vincent. We're going to have uh, Kevin Van Hendrick from uh, Basket Cave. We're going to have, uh, let's see. Do you ever watch Basket Cave? Can we some more people? That's one of my favorite movies, Basket Cave. And Father Evil's going to be there too, right? Father Evil, yeah. Father Evil. Yeah, he's actually a good friend of ours. And a whole bunch of other people. Uh... Ernie O'Donnell, from, who's you know best known from... Ernie Carson. O'Donnell? Yeah, yeah. Well, he's just done a movie called 100 Acres of Hell with uh, Gene Snitsky, and it looks like they're going to finish it before the event, and they're going to have a special showing of that. Uh, Brian Johnson is going to be there with uh, Vulgar. He's going to do a showing of Vulgar. Oh, no shit? Yeah, uh, he's actually... He's already announced this on Tell Steve Days that he is working on Vulgar 2. Awesome. Uh, I'm trying to get Brian O'Halloran to show up, but he's been traveling too much. Well, he's not even uh, supposed to be there that day. Yeah, yeah, he may not be there. That <laughs> well, um, that's true. It's a good shot. I can't announce him yet, but some of the other guys from uh, Comic Men will be there for sure. And, you know, it's just, it, it, it's, it's building. Rick Hurst is going to be there. Tony Moran, we have Tony Moran from... The original, uh, the original uh, Halloween. Halloween guy is going to be there. Tony Moran doesn't do a lot of shows. So we figure we got to bring some monsters in since it's, you know, a horror con. Kick ass. Not just being there. Yeah. But it all, it's all shaping up. Looks like it's going to be great. I know you guys are in Texas. Anybody's listening, go to the website. Tickets are available. Come on, fly up. 
have a great weekend. We're going to have a huge party on Saturday night. Weird fantasy bands are going to play. They've asked me to do a couple songs with them, so I'll probably do a song. Maybe a Crash Romeo uh, reunion. The basket case guy's going to bring his guitar. <laughs> Get Marky Ramone to play the drums. Yeah, set the drums up on top of the mystery machine and just fucking rock out. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's, that's a sight to see right there. <laughs> that's fucking awesome. It's going to be great. You know, you can keep up with the guest list because we're going to have some big announcements this week and next week. Um, and, uh, at, you know, at our, on our website, on our Facebook page, we're, uh, we're updating it uh, all the time and posting almost hourly. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, kick ass. When this episode drops, we'll go ahead and uh, and hit you guys up on Twitter and Instagram Appreciate and let y'all yeah, know it's there. Give me some new Reach out to me on Twitter for sure. Absolutely. Definitely. Thanks, Th- man. Thank, Thank you, guys. We Thanks, appreciate guys. it. Thanks, guys.